Hi there, it's Oliver here from Blendots.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make solid wireframe renders. I mean uh, renders where the we have the mesh, a solid mesh, and the wireframe over it. Okay, this is very cool for demo reels or for showing the wireframe of the models and things like that. So uh, I'm going to show you an example. Okay, I'm here on the 3D Low Poly uh, web. It's a studio where I work. And I have done here uh, a few models, okay, like this dinosaur. As you can see, all is made with Blender. Uh, all these models were done with uh, 2.49, but with 2.5, we can do it uh, with the same methods, okay? So this is what I want to show you: how to make this kind of renders, okay? Uh, a wireframe over a solid mesh. So we are now here in Blender and I got this scene here. Let's see how it looks on the render. I put uh, two lights on the scene and a bit of ambient occlusion. So now we need to put the wireframe material over this solid mesh. Let's take a look at the material I use for this mesh. I have to change this here. So we have a completely white material and any specularity so it's uh, solid and there is no uh, shining areas or things like that. But Well, that's uh, how you want to do it. Uh, now let's create a wireframe material here. So new material. Sorry. Let's create it on the duplicate of this mesh. So we have this mesh here and we need to duplicate it but let it be in the same position as the original one. So when we have this, uh, the second mesh will be the wireframe material. So let's go to the edit mode and let's select this wire sorry, here, wire so from this mesh we only see the wire and now here on the modifiers activate this so we see better the the result on the edit mode so we have to make it just a bit bigger than the original one okay I'm uh, selecting all the faces and pressing alt s which will scale the faces basing on the normal. Alright, now for this second mesh we create a material okay, let's delete this one and create a new one which is called wireframe matte for example. This will be completely black and shadeless so any light or shadow will affect it. And here uh, instead of surface we select wire so here we have uh, only the wireframe of the mesh is shown. And let's see how it looks on the render right now. Okay, there we have it. Now let's see the second method. Let's create a new sim which will be a full copy of this one. Okay, this will be method 02 and the other one will be method 01 so let's go to method 02 and just select this mesh and delete it okay because now we are going to duplicate this again and apply it to it the wireframe material again Activate here the wire so we can see the two meshes here. But what we do now is let's take a render so you can see what happens. Okay, as the two meshes are uh, the same size, they will be intersecting in some areas. Okay, like this or like this. So uh, that's why in the first method we scaled a bit the wireframe mesh.
but now we're going to take it with a different approach okay here on the material we're going to activate transparency okay and when you activate transparency you can see that the C offset parameter is active right now so uh, by default it's on zero what this will be doing is uh, offsetting this material basing uh, respectively to the camera okay so uh, in the render it will be doing something like this putting the material uh, closer to the camera or a bit far away okay here is zero and here for example is one and here is minus one so I'm going to let it on the same position as the original mesh and put this at one is uh, one is uh, very much but let's try it so as you can see we can see the back faces of the wire and that's because this is right now like this for example okay so if you, if you take a look at it from the camera you can see that you see the the back faces because they are uh, in front of the original ones so control C control C we are here and let's try with point one all this looks much better but you can see that in thin areas we uh, we even can see the back faces so let's try a bit less well now it works better but we need even less here okay right now is better and now I'm going to to tell you let's save this scene and I'm going to tell you what happens with these two methods and that's why I uh, came out with a third method and it's because the ray tracing doesn't recognize this wireframe material okay for example if I select the floor and put uh, a mirror material to it Let's take a look uh, for example let's create a new material uh, reflecting floor mat okay and let's activate mirror here reflectivity to one so you can see the effect and this is what happens okay in the reflection you don't get this wireframe material so that's why I came out with the third method let's go again to the method one and duplicate this as seen full copy and this will be method 03 alright now we select the wireframe and delete it because we are only working uh, with the base mesh uh, in this method what I do is just create uh, a wireframe texture and apply a texture to the to the object is uh, <coughs> it's probably a bit crappy method uh, but well it works in a lot of cases and well it's it's very simple to do okay so I I have here done some quick UBs to this monkey mesh here you have them so there is a method to uh, export these UBs here to an image so let's go here to UBs export UV layout and now here Let's go for example to the desktop 
and make this monkey UVs I'm going to save them as EPS activate here all UVs let's change here the extension sport UV layout and now I, I need to open it in Photoshop so let's open see monkey UVs open okay now maybe a bit of post processing is needed here as you can see the the wires are pretty consistent now maybe add a bit of contrast here because now we are going to use this as a as a diffuse texture so the the faces here are gray but we want them on white so let's for example a bit of contrast here to see if it works where are you? here in the curves okay let's save this as um, JPEG for example I usually don't work with JPEGs but well, it's pretty quick and it works for now. And let's apply, let's open that texture here, desktop, let's see monkey UVs open, here we have them, and let's apply this texture to this material. So let's go here, wire texture, Select here image or movie, and I had I have here this. Uh, where are you? Oh, here. Monkey UBs. Now let's apply this to the UBs, and here you have the the wireframe over the model. Okay, now to the to the floor plane let's just create a duplication of this material but without this texture now let's take a render to see how it looks and well <laughs> my error here uh, I should uh, so divided the the monkey mesh before exporting these UBs. Okay, so I should have to apply this. So I exported this this uh, this UBs and then just apply this again to a non subdivided uh, model. But well, that's. Uh, you can do that and now let's take another render maybe giving this texture a bit more resolution and if we select the plane now and apply to it the reflecting floor material we can see the wireframe on the reflection that's it. I recommend you to use uh, one of the first methods like this one here because it looks more much more cleaner and well for doing it with a texture you need a very very big texture overall if you are working with a pretty dense mesh but uh, if you need some reflections or or C buffers or things like that you probably won't be doing it with these methods because they don't work and I'm going to uh, put a link to download this uh, file on the original post on blentus.com if you are 
mm, taking a look at this video from Vimeo, you can access uh, that post from a link I will be posting on the description of the video. Hope you like it and happy blending!